Coming up on the next fight, Lomachenko versus Rigandal. Rigandal. Ah, uh, same shit, different day. The Cuban. Mm, yeah. But remember when I told you when I said Rigandal fought against Donaire and you're like, you didn't remember that fight because all we thought about was Walters when Walters fought against um against Donaire? Yeah, I think so. Rigandal did fight him. And he lost by decision. Donaire lost by decision to Rigandal. Well, Rigand- That's why I had I had it stuck in my head that he did fight him. I don't remember Rigandal because I don't watch too many no. of his fights because he's a boring fighter. He reminds me of Pernell Whitaker, a guy that knows how to fight. Yeah, but no, but okay, you're you're bringing up that argument that everybody else is bringing up. But when people see Floyd Mayweather and they say like, oh, you know, he's good at defense, he's good at that, but then they see Rigandal, they're like, oh, boring. Rigandal never knocks him out. Mayweather has knocked him out. Ricky Hatton. That they said he couldn't be knocked out, he knocked out. That chump from uh, Kansas City. Ortiz got his ass knocked out. I have never seen Rigandell knock out anybody I guess, like but that. if you if you just look at how they box, and like the movement too, the movement is on point with both fighters. Like Floyd, how he moves, Floyd's and everybody a says he's you know fighter. the top def- yeah the top defensive fighter. But Rigandell fights similarly. He's not the same as Floyd, and I get that he's like Floyd has more knockouts, like you said. But at the same time, Rigandell has that style of like he watches and then move fast. Like, well, guess what? When he fights Lomachenko, he can move fast. Guess what? Lomachenko can move faster. So you got Lomachenko to knock him out for a knockout. For a knockout, he's gonna he's gonna what's in call annoy him that Rigandell's just gonna quit. Sort of like what's his name quit Walters. Walters, because he's uh, every time he swings, he's not gonna be there. Mm, I think it's gonna be a good fight. I have. I think I have Lomachenko too. But even on Lomachenko's record, for people that don't even like know Lomachenko much and they look at his record, he has one loss. He has one controversial loss. But we loss. saw that last year, remember? Contra- yes. This was before, before Salido, Lomachenko was Salido even like was a-, a name to watch. We watched that fight and we're like, oh, let's see what this guy's about because of the gold medals. That's what it was, yeah. remember? He had his amateur career was really good. So he thought, you know, he was more of an amateur that he could come in and fight a champion, but champions know tricks. Pampy and know how to how to hide stuff from referees and how to hurt you, how to throw cheap shots, and you'll never know where it's coming from. Compared with Lomachenko, he wait. Was, so you're saying like he was a, he was a, he was a, he was fighting the amateurs where they score everything by points, by computer things, not in boxing. You could cheat. You could find ways of going around. You could hold, move, hit certain plays without you know them saying anything. Uh, well, I think Salcedo is. Well, for a those that fighter. don't know, though. That fight, his loss was against Orlando Salido. Yeah. Which even now, if you think about it, and you're like, dang, like how did Lomachenko lose to Salido? Because Salido is a powerful puncher, he's good, but at the same time, like Lomachenko is fast and he moves and he's like so like, how do you even say it? Like he's just he fought, way- fought he fought like two fighters before that were that were pros, not a champion. He's a champion. There's a reason why you're a champion. Who? Or Orlando. Yeah. There's a reason. But I think if they had that rematch now, it would be... A different a, story. It would be close still because I don't think Salido would go in there and just know, all right, Lomachenko's going to fight the same way that they fought the first time. I don't time. think he's going to fight the same way. He found ways of better. He got his defensive better. A lot better. Yeah. His speed got a lot better too. But I think if they had that rematch, just I like would every- see Lomachenko coming out with that victory. Yeah. Just like, you know, I don't like uh, Canela. Canelo. Oh, the Canela, like I said. if They said if he would have fought Mayweather now, he would have given Mayweather a better fight. But let me say this, though. You weren't always calling Canelo Canela. Because I remember when Canelo first started, you were like, this kid looks like he can bring, you know, he means business. This kid looks like he could be the next big thing. Like I said, I follow a lot of boxing, and I've always known Mexican fighters never to back down from no one until now. So, to me, he's never going to be a real Mexican fighter like the Legends. Benito Lopez, Chavez Sr., you know, De La Hoya even went after everybody, and he's Mexican-American, you know? They all did, and Canela didn't do it. Oh, I'm scared of all this. He made excuses. Oh, he's... And then when he fights Triple G, they rob him. So, so you that's me. G that's my that opinion. Fight. That's my opinion. You yes. thought Triple G won that Triple fight. Triple G won that fight. It seemed like everybody else that was sitting next to me thought the same thing. Even the... True Mexican guy that was next to me saying that Canelo was his idol. He even said Canelo lost. How does that work? Yeah. But, I mean, 
focusing back on this weekend. On Lomachenko, yes. And you were even saying, you were saying, because we thought it was going to be on Showtime. Oh, yeah, it's on fight. ESPN. ESPN, which makes it even better, though, because you think boxing and you're like... This will be that everybody could watch this fight. Oh, one are, thing that I wanted to say, too, is that Lomachenko, the name that Lomachenko has, yeah, it's not pay-per-view, yeah, it's not... Canelo, Triple G, or Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather. But so many people know about him. Like, um, one of my old trainers, he's an MMA trainer, not boxing. He follows MMA. He doesn't follow any boxing, really. Like, he knows about the big names. Put it this way, he didn't really know about Miguel Cotto much, right? Yeah. But he asked me, he's like, hey, you know, there's there's this guy. Do you know about a guy named um, Lomachenko? I was like, What? Yeah. Like, how do you know about Lomachenko? Like, Lomachenko is like a name that only boxing fans would know. In my opinion. Like, that's what I thought. I thought, because if you're not Manny Pacquiao, if you're not Floyd Mayweather, yeah, but or if these, you're not Oscar, a lot of these no MMA really fighters are going, are going to Freddie Roach and other guys to teach No, that's him true, but this is the guy that doesn't go to Wild Card. And he knew about Lomachenko. And he's like, have you seen his footwork? Have you seen it? He's so like he 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 fights so well. And then when I told him, I'm like, well, his dad or wh- whatever his path was that he was a dancer at one point. For court Russian dancing, he got he got him in as a boxer when he was a little kid, and when he was mastering boxing, he knew how to use hand speed and everything. And then he goes, well, now we're gonna work on your footwork. And so he thought it was gonna work boxing. He got him out of boxing. He didn't. He was eating, breathing, boxing. And then when they took him out for those maybe four or five years, it was all about dancing, everything. So when they brought him back after that, his dad goes, he knows his footwork now. That's smart. Because yep. who, would, who would even tie in that, like, let's take you out of this sport. Let's take you out of boxing and put you into dancing. Yeah. Would you ever think that you're a boxing fan? You've been following no, boxing forever. Would, would you that. ever thought? Never would have thought that. I think more like football or uh, soccer to do footwork. But I think that's down. the case with a lot of um, like boxers, especially like in the like Latin kind of background. Well, here's you know, a good Spanish. one. Yeah. They do they 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 play um, soccer. Yeah, but uh, look at Mayweather when he wasn't dancing with the stars. He knew how to use footwork. He knew how to dance pretty good. I forgot he was on that. He knew how to dance pretty good because footwork. Mm-hmm. Well, on Rigondeaux's end though. Rigondeaux. He was born and raised in Cuba where either you were a farm worker, athlete, or a, a brainiac. You get to choose what you are, and it turns out he was a, he was an athlete. So in Cuba, you when you're little and they know you're going to be something, that's what you're going to learn. Well, I think that's also a plus, though. It is a plus, because, and is it a negative? Well, it's a negative because you're solely focused on that, and like that's all you can do. That's all you can do. But at the same time, I feel like that's gotten him to where he's at. Like He defected. What do you mean? He got out of Cuba. If he didn't defect, he'd still be in Cuba. You're not allowed to just get up and leave in Cuba. True. He was, I can't remember what part of the country that they were amateur fighting. It could have been a Pan Am game or something. And he defected. Remember, the United States has that thing. If you make it to soil without any help or anything, they'll give you sanctuary. From a communist country, the Cuba. Well, I mean, obviously this was his path, though. This was his path, but they started from the bottom up, and he's doing okay, but he's not a style of fighter that people don't like. People like knockouts. And but Reagan see, that's doesn't. what I don't... Yeah, I get that. But Everybody I know wants to see boxing, brawls. Boxing. They want to see you know, a brawl. You, yes, it's not even a brawl with him. No, I know that. That's why I'm saying people are not like kind of like discrediting him in a way, but that's him along with other fighters that are more of the defensive fighters. But you, you think... I remember even like when he fought against Donair, you don't like watching that because Donair was coming in to really trying to get him, and you're like, do something. And everybody else in that ba- in the in the boxing arena was saying the same thing. Yeah, but it was he the won. point system. Yeah, he won. Well, I think this upcoming weekend will be a great matchup, for we'll sure. See how the point system works here. The fact that it's on ESPN too, not ESPN two, but also on ESPN. Being televised on ESPN, yes. It makes sense. Yep. Not HBO because HBO, HBO Showtime. HBO is going to have Orlando Salcido fighting this weekend too. Come to think of it. Orlando I, Salido. Salido, he's fighting against some other guys this Saturday too on HBO. I don't like when they have two two major fights on two different you know. You have TV to be stations. switching the channel. Yes, you have to be switching the channel. But at the same time, I'm I'm feeling that 
more people are gonna tune in to Lomachenko Rigondeaux because Rigondeaux You're Rigondeaux tw- play, tried to play that social media game of calling people out, calling them out, saying that they're this, calling them little, like you know, insulting them on on social media. Well, they're trying to do what uh, a couple years ago. Remember that Chavez Jr. versus Sergio Martinez versus uh, Canela versus someone else. I can't remember what. And it turns out that everybody bought the pay per view for Chavez Jr. versus Sergio Martinez instead of Canelo's fight. Because why? It was more exciting. I don't even remember that being on pay per view. Yeah, it was. I think. It, yeah, I think it was. Or yeah. just on HBO. Either way, it was a good fight. It's saying like everybody else was watching Sergio Martinez versus Chavez. Then. Well, that fight. Canela. That fight, though. If we're gonna talk about that fight, that fight was just. It was pretty much like almost exposing Chavez Jr. Well, it exposed him. Because I remember that whole thing with the whole um, sit down with Kellerman, you know, the face to face off. And it was like they're just jabbing at each other. And then Sergio Martinez went straight up and said, When are you going to start being yourself and living your own name instead of just having the name of your father and being the son of? Yeah. But then even in that fight, that's what, where Chavez actually like surprises everyone. The whole fight, you're like, oh my gosh, like, you know. Sergio Godson. Yeah, Chavez, Chavez sucks, this and this, like, why did this fight even happen? And then all of a sudden in the 12th round, it's like, oh my gosh, is Chavez going to take over? Is he going to win? Is he going to show Martinez why he had that title? Like, that it wasn't just given to him? Which it was given to him, but nope. Martinez proved it, pulled it, got up, and won the fight. If it would have been the old school 15-round fights, Martinez would have lost. Yeah, because he was pretty much done. He was almost knocked out in that 12th round. Correct. And came back to surprise the world. But that goes on to a whole other rant. But even with Chavez, I thought he was going to do that against Canelo. Yeah, but nothing happened. That was just a money fight. He was there just to collect his money. And that was it. Well, tuning into this fight, I think, is well worth it this weekend. This weekend, this Saturday. We'll see what happens. You have... Lomachenko to win. I have Lomachenko to win as well. But I'm saying don't count out Rigondeaux. And because of the two styles that are going to face each other. Yeah. Lomachenko has been able to walk around and, you know, move everyone out of his way. And even toy with them. This time, Rigondeaux moves well too. So it's not that he won't be able to toy with them because he might. But at the same time... <laughs> so what's going to happen if it's not, it's not the fight that we all expected? What happens if it's a defensive fighter? What happens if it's a Brigandel fight where it's boring? If Who's going to take it? If both of them are the defensive fighters? Correct. Who's going to take it then? Brigandel. Brigandel will take it then. Yes. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying you can't really count Brigandel out because it's not like Brigandel is a fighter that's not known to be defensive and not known to like really move. Like hit and land his points and then be smart enough to move because he is. But it's just that people have seen Lomachenko and that he actually comes at you, he moves, but he comes at you and moves, comes at you and moves. So now it's going to be these two styles getting put together in the ring. What's going to happen? It's hard to really pick one because you pick Lomachenko, yeah, you've seen him fight recently, you've seen him do this and that, but you forget, or it's at the back of your head that Rigondeaux also has the capability to bring the same style almost. Yeah, we'll see what They're happens. They're both like almost elusive fighters. Yep. Light well, on their feet. Well. I think it won't. It could go all 12. Yeah. I think it might go all 12. But I'm hoping Lomachenko knocks him out. Hopefully, you know, he stops him like he did out of everybody else, frustrating them, catching them, and then just giving up. No mas, no mas. Like Walters did the Panamanian. Well, he's not from Panama, but he's trained in Panama. He He did the famous no mas call. No mas. And it ended the fight. He didn't come out no more. I can't remember what round right now. Walters is not from Panama. I know, but he's being trained by pa- in Panama. Yeah. That's where he went to go get trained. Mm-hmm. They had good boxers. That's where the famous Roberto Duran came out of. And he also had no mas. Well, we'll see what happens this, this weekend. It's coming up this weekend. We'll see. <laughs>